Hey everybody, it's John and Katie with CW23. Today we are very humbled and very excited to have three survivors of the Annex security team during the Benghazi terror attacks in 2012. We have John Tig Tegan, Mark Ozgeist, and Chris Tonto Peranto. They're here to talk about the film 13 Hours, which comes out in theaters on January 15th. First of all, thank you guys for your service and thanks for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you for being thanks here. For now, you co-authored this novel, 13 Hours, which the movie is based on. What is your initial reaction when not only the book does so well, but you find out that it's going to be turned into a film? <laughs> Go ahead. It's, uh, it's kind of surreal. Um, you know, it's something we, our lives have never been out in the public. We've never had a lot of publicity or we've always mm -hmm. shied away from that because of what we've done and our backgrounds. And uh, so <clears throat> then starting with the book, um, you know, kind of we, we kind of got out there and a little bit used to the, the media, but um, it's been crazy now with uh, the movie and everything and the way that's going. So it's still getting used to it. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I like the camera. <laughs> the camera loves me, Tonto actually. Cam. Yeah, yeah. Sure. that's Tonto what it cam. is. It is. Yeah. It's been fun. Cam. This has been great. Is the is the film pretty close to the book? As far as you can, you've got 13 hours that you got to put in two hours. Yeah. So you have to meld characters a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but it does get the brotherhood down. It gets dealing with adversity. You know, and it, it, it's going to get a lot of the emotions that we felt that night, which mm -hmm. was important. Because the actors, and the actors did such a great job learning us, learning our personalities. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I have a gregarious personality. Can you imagine that? Ranger said gregarious. <laughs> I just, I did. That was my word. That, that was my word of the day this morning. <laughs> so, but that was fantastic. Um, and I, I think it's, and you know, Michael Bay, of course, can do explosions and yeah. gunfire, um, and that's what war is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think it was fairly, fairly close to what we could in the book as far as yeah. getting a two-hour <laughs> movie again with a 13-hour firefight. Cool. Well. Speaking of Michael Bay, we saw some of the footage, some of the behind the scenes footage, yeah. and it looks like in a lot of the shots of this behind the scenes footage that you guys are actually directing yeah. Michael Bay on how to direct this <laughs> well, film to make, it, to make it look like it really looked. So can you guys tell us about that, Tig? Oh, you want me Did to you guys that? actually have a lot of freedom to kind of get involved while they're shooting and say, yeah, we hey, had this a, is what it actually looked like? Yeah, we had to throw Michael Bay in the, in the river a couple times and take over, and, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, because he yeah. wouldn't use Optimus Prime like Tonto wanted. And, <clears throat> but no, he did a really good job. I mean, it's the same thing as the actors of Michael Bay. He'd come up to us and ask us about certain scenes, like, "Hey, is this how this happened?" Or, mm -hmm. and you know, he had us right there looking over his shoulder, like like you saw in the, the little film. And yeah. I mean, it was just a he did a really good job and wanted to make it as accurate as possible. And tell him how you cost a hundred thousand more dollars on set. Yeah. Give yeah. me a story. Uh -oh. Craft service. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was so. <laughs> <laughs> so when they were doing the, they're like doing the set design. They're kind of they they showed like an overview of because they already had the annex already set up and mm -hmm. they're showing the pictures and I kind of went in there with the set design guy. I was like, well, this the, the wall over here is supposed to be over here and the wall over here and this light's supposed to be over here and mm -hmm. Michael Bay's just kind of in the doorway, crosses his arms and says, well, thanks, Tig, you just cost me another hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> He's like, don't nice. worry about it. No one else has been there, so they don't know. <laughs> yeah. But we know. he went ahead yeah. with it, and you know, and that kind of just showed us yeah. the commitment from them, um, him, Paramount, you know, everybody involved in this of how they wanted to get it right. Does it look like it really looked? We the the annex definitely does. You yeah. walk onto yeah. that, and um, yeah, it's definitely there. I remember being up on the roof, walking out of the roof I was at that night, and you, you, you know, I just went back. You could everything. Vivid from that mm -hmm. night again. Yeah, it was, it's, they even had the bed that you were laying on up there, didn't you? And the <laughs> tissues. Yeah, the bed and the tissues that I had up there because because uh, he was crying the whole night. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Did we go through this with joy? I would be crying. <laughs> <That was> joy. <laughs> <laughs> These guys couldn't hit anything. So I was shooting all their guys. It was mm -hmm. fantastic. I was yeah. just so happy up there. Is it difficult to be on set, and especially if things look so similar, to to recreate these moments and to keep going through these horrific memories? Um, I mean, for the most part, it wasn't horrific I mean and I guess maybe that's just from our perspective it's doing a job and it's mm -hmm. what we've always trained to do and what we do best um, so it's just getting the job done for us I, mm -hmm. I agree it's not horrific we had a, all of us I had fun I was having a blast that night I go back in a heartbeat it's 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 what guys like us we, we like to do we're in our element and um so it's reliving it again the only thing that bothers me is is that I'm not able to do it again that's what's bothering Mm -hmm. um, it's not that, oh, it's such a terrible time out there. It's mm -hmm. not at all. It's just, gosh, dang it, I, I want to go back and do this, but now, now I can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the hardest thing. And uh, 
on a serious note, one of your friend and partner, Tyrone mm. Roan Woods. I mean, you guys were obviously very big heroes that night, but he was probably the biggest hero of all because he gave his life to save innocent people. If you guys had the chance to talk to him one more time, what would you say? How would he feel about the movie, do you think? You know, um, it's a good question, because I mean, Ty, even out of all of us, he was more private in that respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was kind of the uh, opposite of what most of the SEALs are, and he wasn't into doing the books and <laughs> that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know? Because <laughs> I, I used to give him heck all the time. I'm like, yeah, because he was an instructor at Bud's. So I used to tell him, yeah, he was the, he was the one who taught the, the week after Hell Week where they learned to write books in, in Bud's. But mm -hmm. um, in, in, on a serious okay. note, I mean, <clears throat> I think because this story wasn't, you know, just like we didn't want to come out and tell this story. This mm -hmm. wasn't something that we felt that we wanted to do, but it was we had to do it because mm -hmm. the left and right had taken the story and spun it into stuff that wasn't wasn't honoring the four Americans that died, wasn't honoring him. Yeah. Um, and I think because he has that same um, sense of honor and dedication that he would want to tell the story and make sure that what was portrayed that night would have been portrayed in the right way since it mm -hmm. was already brought out. Okay. Tell him thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I, hey, hey, bro, thanks. You, you, gave, you gave everything, mm -hmm. him and Glenn, Bob Doherty, another, you know, another teammate of mm -hmm. ours from Triple. So I think Do you have anything to add to that? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> he right. talks. You can tell he Tig talks a, a lot. Talker out all of us. Yeah, you, you'll have to stop him and hold him back. Sometimes. That's why I kept him in the middle so they can't just like get like walk off. And... Yeah, <laughs> I've only done it once. Nobody's watching. Okay, I walked off. <laughs> I saw in another interview, uh, one of you stated that you just felt compelled to tell this story the right way, and that's why you're doing this. What do you hope to come of doing that? Just, just the truth. The truth gets out. <clears throat> uh, so it, it's not politicized anymore. Here's the truth. That's it, mm -hmm. watch it. This is what happened on the ground that night. Yeah, and then the gray areas are gone. And, and that's the only thing we can ask for. And then people's views, however they're gonna go left, right views, down the middle, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. so it's, here's the truth. All right, go on with your lives. Now you guys know actually what really happened. Okay. So speaking of the, the politics of the, of the issue, the book is, I mean, right away it says, we're not really getting into politics in this mm -hmm. book. We're just saying what happened. Mm -hmm. Would, I, you guys were there. You guys have lived through all of the hearing the left and the right and everything in between. Do you guys think that, in your opinion, that there was any government officials trying to change the narrative of what happened, or do you feel like that's just been a used as a political football? Well, that's why that's why we came out with the with the, with the book mm -hmm. instead of going straight to the press, is because they can't. The press, when you just come out and talk to them, they can twist your words and do whatever mm -hmm. they want with it. Um, with those doing the book, they can't do that, and everybody mm -hmm. pretty much took it as a political football and just yeah. wanted to throw the pass and get an end zone touchdown for themselves and mm -hmm. not worry about the four guys who, who died that night, not honor them. And you know, it's the first the first memorial that was ever set up was set up by a firefighter out of out of uh, California, he paid it out of his own pocket. You know, mm -hmm. and, and here you are, you had uh, an ambassador and another D, uh, foreign service foreign officer. service officer they got killed, and you know, all they said was their names, and they had a funeral, and that was it. You know, mm -hmm. and you had two Navy SEALs that were, you know, doing security for the agency. And, yeah, they had a little cer star ceremony and put it on the wall, but that was it, you know. Then, mm -hmm. And then they just wanted to bash each other back and forth, left and right, and mm -hmm. kind of ticked us off. So we did the book, and, mm -hmm. you know, it, we just made sure it was not about the politics. It just honors, honors the guys that sacrificed their lives that night. Okay. You guys have anything to add to that? No, it's kind of... You know, because I was on the rooftop when Glenn and Ty got killed. I was injured mm -hmm. in that same explosion. There were three explosions that got them. And seeing, you know, seeing, and I think I, maybe it's a little bit more personal to me, or at least I feel it is, because they were attacking their credibility mm -hmm. by spinning this story into something that it wasn't. Yeah. And it angered me. And, you know, the truth needed to be told on what happened mm -hmm. that night. This is what happened. It's 13 hours of our life from our perspective and this that's all it is and mm -hmm. luckily we've been able to partner with paramount and michael bay who saw the same thing wanted to tell the same story that we told in the yeah. same manner and you know i think it's going to be a great movie and as tonto said people you know come see it don't come in here with a closed mind come with an open mind and find out what four american heroes did um serving their country 
Mm -hmm. 13 hours, you know, secret soldiers of Benghazi <clears throat> is going to show that when bullets start flying, politics take a back seat. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're right or left, black, white, yellow, red, makes mm -hmm. no difference. Um, you're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I do, yeah, I, I, I think it was pulled and, and ostrac the, the truth was bastardized, ostr ostracized, however you want to look at it. But we're the ones that have been able to come and say, hey, you know, no, that didn't happen. This is exactly what happened that mm -hmm. night on the ground. And it, it's, it's, I, I do feel a little bit of vindication. I think more so when the movie does come out, people actually see it. That, mm -hmm. you know what, this was story was really turned into something that it shouldn't have been for agendas. And now we're getting it back on track. Yeah. There's so, some people that still worry that that might happen. I remember when the trailer came out, yeah. there was some controversy that. The, peop the innocent people of Libya are going to be depicted in a negative light. What do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, the movie hasn't even come out yet. I mean, yeah. How, can, yeah. Yeah, how can they even say that? And, and, no, and the Libyan people are not bad people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're fantastic. They're just the terrorists are bad mm -hmm. people. And I, I think that was more of a spin than anything. Yeah, because yeah, we've always said, I mean, I know I always have. I was on my third trip, my very first trip, I was in Benghazi. You know, a lot of the stores were still closed down because, you know, the revolution and they're starting to open it up and you know we were out in town quite a bit because it was pretty much dead because not a lot of people were living there at the time but they realized we were westerners we were americans they'd come up shake our hand they said hey we're glad you guys are here and i'm honored to meet an american and they'd buy us coffee they'd pay for our lunch mm -hmm. you know so for the most part i mean i didn't mind the locals at all really mm -hmm. it was just you know it was kind of like being around uh, chicago <clears throat> in the 60s when the mobs you know were going crazy killing each other and you didn't know who was in control of what and that's yeah. pretty much what's going on there they don't know which militia it wasn't the government that was in control of militias that were in control of certain neighborhoods or something like that mm -hmm. you know you knew something was there you just didn't know when it was going to happen mm -hmm. you know right. one thing that got glossed over after um the after benghazi the day after or two days after there was over a hundred thousand libyans protesting against the terrorists mm -hmm. for Ambassador Stevens. Mm -hmm. yep. And that the movie talks about that. Um, so if that shows the Libyan people in a negative light, then I think that's some government official from over there trying to spend something for his own benefit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they attacked Ansar al-Sharia themselves and killed several of them and pushed them out of Benghazi. Okay. Well, I just have one more question. Katie, you might have another one too after this, but uh, my final question is, as you almost lost your hand in this, this attack and had some other injuries, and I know all of you guys had, uh, obviously it was a very physically taxing situation. Tell us about what it was like to endure that and go through and just push to the end. How do you do that in that situation? You know, it's just, <clears throat> you have a choice. I mean, you can either, I mean, I'm sitting on the roof and my arms, you know, Tig's the one who saved my life. He got a tourniquet on my arm, stopped the bleeding there. And I either had to get up and climb off the roof and let him do his job and not be a burden on that, or I could sit there and bleed to death. I mean, to me, it's simple. You just get up and you do what you have to do. You have to find that drive within yourself um, to keep going. Um, you know, for me, a lot of that basis on my faith and my family. Mm -hmm. Mine is, <clears throat> says a lot for the training, special ops training you get. You go through a lot of, you endure a lot of, uh, a lot of physical hardships just making into a SEAL team or Rangers or a, re a force recon, a Marine force recon team. So um, that gives you that, that basis, or at least that mindset that I've been through hell before, even mm -hmm. if it's just in training. And we also spent close to 10 years overseas working before that. So this wasn't our first rodeo. Mm -hmm. So y you already have that, that I can get through this. I've been, yeah. I proved myself. And then it does, comes down to God. I, I'm, I'm a strong Christian. It comes mm -hmm. down to God and faith. I, I can do this. Just you, you get it in your head that you don't want to let your brothers down either. Because mm -hmm. if you go down, now you're a burden for mm -hmm. your buddy next to you. <clears throat> so it, it's it's it, it is. It really is easy. You just turn in, kind of you just turn into a more of a without sounding Terminator ish. You kind of turn into yeah. a machine, and you just mm -hmm. you go through it, and you have faith that that's what you're supposed to be doing, and, and God's going to get you through it, and your training is going to get you through it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it says a lot for how well trained special ops units are. Because even us old guys that night because of that back training we had, we were able to yeah. push through. Very cool. All right. Hey. Well, I got mine through uh, the public uh, education system, just fighting through that. <laughs> <laughs> he had a hard time. He's, he's, he's going to get it. How often do you um, try to get repayment for saving this guy's life? I mean, every <laughs> every day. weekend. Really? He's like, he calls me up. He's like, yeah, my truck's kind of dirty. I need you to wash my truck. I'm like, 
Dude, you only saved my life once. That's it. You only get one <laughs> one favor. That's it. He's At least I'm not making him feed my cows, so he should be happy. Actually, yeah. he owes the world for saving his life. Gosh, dude, much better place with Mark not here. Mark's That's a pain probably, in the yeah. butt. Yeah. That's that annoying. Anything to add, Katie? Yeah, one more thing, I guess. Uh, family seems very important to all of you. One thing that always interests me, having a father that was in Vietnam that never wants wow. to speak about it. How do you deal uh, with something like this with your family? Um, do your... Will your your loved ones see this film? Will your children eventually see this film? What do you think? Go ahead, John. <laughs> He's, no. thinking. He's thinking. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I, I, th I, mean, I know my wife's probably going to see it. Obviously, my my well, they'll probably be they'll be four by the time the movie really comes out. But so I'll probably see it when they get to see it. Um, when they're ten? Yeah, they're about ten. So I got another six years before I'll see the movie. But really? Yeah, but uh, you know yeah. it's. You know, as for not talking about it, it's definitely been because uh, even doing the book, it took Mitch a long time to drag a lot of stuff out. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, except for Tonto, I think I, I Tom, put his Tonto, transcriber yeah, yeah. through to, to heat but so many pages. I think a lot of a lot of guys that we've even talked to on the road, they would actually come up to us and start talking to us after we tell our story during speaking engagements, and you know, their wife standing right there says, "Man, he's never even talked to nobody." It's just having that that. That outlet, and now a lot of guys, they've even emailed messages later saying that I feel so much better now. I had a chance to talk, and now I'm going to somebody to talk about it. And I think a lot of guys, they just need to talk stigma. about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard at first, but you know, it's, it's still going to be hard no matter what. But it, mm -hmm. it relieves a lot of a lot of pressure on yourself. It's a very cathartic process. Very therapeutic. There you go, using those big words again. Rangers can use words. Marines, I'm sorry. I'll teach you guys when we get in the truck. We'll go through Spell the... it. No. <laughs> K-thartic. K no, fam, my son is... Uh, he's hes the world to me. My 11-year-old, he goes to a, a private Christian school, and he snuck the mm -hmm. book when he was... When it first came out, he snuck to school, read it, and his principal actually let him do a book report on it. Um, so, and then he... Uh, cool. He likes to... he, he Him and... Uh, um, Pablo's son comes over. Some the guy that this guy's giving me crap about it. The guy that plays me in the movie. They uh, <laughs> when it comes to the house, uh, they play the Battle of Benghazi. So it's actually it's nice. If my son mm -hmm. is proud of it. I'm good with any. I don't care really what anybody else says. He's happy with it. He yeah. he thinks his dad's a hero. I'm I'm good with whatever else comes my way. Well, you guys are heroes, and thank you guys so much for being here. Thank We're you. We're extremely. Honored. Oh, yeah, no, thank you. Honored to be in your presence, and no. thank you for everything you did. Just thank normal you. guys doing a job. Thank well, you, guys. We thank you. hope to, to do that. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. And everybody, make sure you check out 13 Hours in Theaters, January 15th.